It is time for our bi-monthly checkup in Crossdoor because a new event has dropped today and we've got some new balancing changes and a gadget to go through and opening some packs and all that kind of thing. So let's do some quick catch up what has happened recently. We've had the second half of the Kite and Astral event, meaning Astral is now unlockable at level 20. And that's kind of about it. This event's been going on for almost a month now and it'll be a month total when it does you know, fully finish, which is kind of ridiculous given this game already has a problem of not enough content in a month and so having this event be like two thirds of the content for one month is not super fun in my opinion. Then we've got today the brand new Stop the Ultimate Insect Combo raid event bringing us Weevil as a unlockable character, our first character available via a raid all event only at level 20 again which is a bit disappointing but it's understandable and again rewards right the play map we've got a uh, a brand new icon in the event missions and some sleeves and the icon again is a very good one let's go to the icon there we go we've got the great moth icon anthropomorphized looks pretty cool and people are going to go grind for it and from what I've so far the event is focused around going against great moth obviously you're battling cocoon evolutions and when you destroy them you get your own great moth to attack the great moth it's a bit weird but it seems to be okay it's nothing like new or revolutionary for the raid all event it's just kind of the same as usual and with these events they're usually not as difficult as the standard monarch boss so it's fine right there's of course some bonuses you get for using certain monsters but apart from that that is all that's available in the game there's some new challenge doors right that i forgot to bring out last month and that's about it right there's a new gacha with the gray moth which looks pretty beefy right and its effect is kind of cool you can summon it as a cocoon evolution with two tributes and then you just over the course of four turns it evolves into the Grey Moth, and then you transform monsters on your opponent's field into Cocoon Revolution. So, it seems fun enough, but is it going to be meta relevant? No, not really, but again, cross door. You don't really need to play a meta deck, it's just kind of a big for fun mishmash of decks and cards, and given it's already so hard to get what you want to get in this game, I don't see people really going for this over just playing the standard Great Moth, and that's what I'm doing. He's not going for this. I'm going back into the Galaxy Eyes Gacha because... I haven't got three copies of Galaxy Eyes yet, and I really want it. I've got one, I can craft one, and we've got enough for one and a half temples, right? So hopefully we don't get scammed on this. Ultra rare. Okay. I'll take it, please. Just don't be Leviathan Dragon, or don't be a Trickster Holy Angel. Okay. Okay, we've got Cerberus. I think that's my... not my first. We've then got Soprano. That is my first. Okay, well, happily take that. And then we've got probably the best one, to be fair, honestly. This is like a Utopia on steroids that kind of every turn can get this big buff off and it resets. And that's why it's kind of better than Utopia. And there's more cards to support it. Like, I'm fine with it. Not my go to choice for an Ultra Rare. But that is it. <laughs> okay, that is it. Uh, all of them are new. Okay, fair enough. All those are new. So that was actually not too bad. Uh, let's go do four more. Why not just round it off, right? Let's see anything in the... Uh, nope, let's just skip. And nothing, of course. So once again, that is kind of all in Crossdoor. And it kind of highlights a problem to me for Crossdoor is that there's not enough going on. Look at Marstall, look at Duel Links. Marstall, I mean, has less events, but they're kind of more meaningful, I think. And Duel Links, we get a new event or something every week. It's constantly refreshing. And the important bit is it's not the same events going forward month to month to month, right? There's always like... A different event between different event right so you got a tag duel then a normal event then like a raid duel event then a pp event in cross duel it's tag event then raid event then tag event then raid event then tag event then raid event and it's getting really really stale really really quickly and it's compounded by the fact this astral uh, kite event has been on for almost a month now and so there's not too much content going on in cross duel and the fact that was kind of always the plan from the start seemingly is not a good sign for the overall commitment I think to the game even if it's not doing as well as other games I still think they could do more with the game overall but let's go on to some leaks for balance adjustments coming in the 1.6 update and that's going to be happening on January 31st I think February 1st around that time and these are all buffs right straightforward buffs and some of them are more warranted than others right so first of all RDA is pretty crazy it's essentially getting its master skill as a special skill, so you can now blow up all defense special monsters in the battle phase, every battle phase, rather than just on the turn you summon it, which is fantastic. But also, its master skill is now being changed to only blow up the opponent's monsters rather than yours, so it does change the way the deck works if you were. Now there's not much reason to play the anti-destruction immunity in your deck, 
so it does free up a skill slot for that, which is nice. Leviathan Dragon has been changed to uh, get a second buff now, to give two focus rather than one, which is just a straight buff. It's better. It now means you'll be gaining, what, 600 attack points every turn rather than 300, which is kind of fantastic. Then we've got Dragius down here, who needed a buff for a long time. He's not been seeing play. And this really wasn't it. They gave him one more extra attack for every other monster on the field, which is fine. You know, plus 1,000 going directly is pretty good. But against Blue Eyes, against these brand new aces, this really isn't all that great. Summon Skull, though, is a lot better. And it's getting the same kind of buff as Red Dragon Archfiend is, but only affecting your opponent's monsters rather than yours, which was one of the big downsides. And so this is now just a much better card to play and can be kind of splashed into most decks now as a easy one tribute and probably one of the best one tributes in the game now. Then we've got Flame Wind Man, who is still not very good. You're giving monsters Crusher a second copy now. And before, one Crusher wasn't enough, two isn't going to do anything. All Crusher does is burn. And so, if the problem is that you can't deal with monsters on the field, then giving more burn doesn't do anything. So, it's not great. Eccentric, though, is fantastic. Because now it's not just the opponent in the lane ahead that can't activate trap cards, it's now one opponent of your choice. So, if you do want to screw over the one to your left or to the right that's not in the same zone as Eccentric, then that now works. And that makes this card way more playable and better than MST. And it's a monster, so you get double versatility. So, it's really, really nice. The spell and trap cards aren't exactly the best buffs, right? It's mainly buffs to burn damage, which I guess buffs Star Magician in a way, because that's all spellcaster, spell card burn. Destruction now is 800, which is more drastic. Sparks 400, the Medicine gains 400, and then Colonel Sparks and Shadow Spell have been buffed, but these don't really do much anyway. They won't see play, and these changes won't make us see play either. Shadow Spell is a worse version of a trap hole. So that's the only reason you play it. And even then, you'd rather play things like your Trap Dust Shoe that deal with threats more immediately. So those are the changes coming to Crostal in the near future. And overall, Crostal is the same as always, and that's the problem. It's just kind of stagnating, kind of getting stale, but I'm still playing it kind of a little bit. As you saw, I only had one temple this time, and uh, that's because I've just not been playing the game as much as I used to. And just the, the fact that the event is so long, and the content is not refreshing at a quick enough pace, is a real down of me, given the dual links, and even Marcel now I'm playing more, so it's not a good sign. And I'd be interested to see what happens with Konami's financial report, which is happening, I believe, on February the 2nd or something, to see what they say about Crossstall, because I don't think they'll say anything, because if there's bad news, then you don't want to say anything in those kind of reports. We'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, this game improves into uh, February, which is going to be Arc 5 month, right? So. We're thinking Silvio, Abyss Actors are becoming, maybe Deccan with DDDs, but that's more likely going to be a Raid all event, so have to wait and see. Anyway, thanks for watching, I'll see you all in the next Crossdoor video in two weeks time-ish, whatever. See you then.